Peter Gray has put out a thing, I think it was this morning, but, but he connected to a, a news program in New Zealand was covering, you know, this dramatic story about how there's this principal who in their 20 minute recess periods, they don't have any rules. You know, they, they eventually did clarify yeah. <laughs> that the kids make the rules. Right. It's not so, and that's, that's typically, it's so funny because, because there is that sort of tendency to go to, well, if kids are in charge, there's no rules. <laughs> and, yeah. and it's not, not the case. It, you know, kids are actually okay with rules. It's when they make them, they, it's okay with them. Right. Well, I mean, humans, humans always do better with ownership of what they're doing. Right. You know, right. And that, has, that goes against ages being a part of it. Like mm-hmm. humans, mm-hmm. if they have ownership and, and in, in anything, they are going to be more involved in wanting to keep that, keep that, that ownership, which mm-hmm. means following the rules that you've set for yourself. Right, right. And, and it, it also kind of counters the, the typical sort of, the other cultural trope is, uh, what's that one, kids trapped on the island? Oh, Lord of the, uh, Lord of Lord the Lord of the Flies. Yeah, yeah. So I eventually, you know, read the book and was like, ah, you know, the, the, <laughs> I, I disliked the book intensely because one of the things he did as an author was he gave no context for who these kids were setting out. He just sort of like, you just enter the scene of them on this island. Right. And he gave so little description of what the thing was. Now, what, what I thought was very telling was that in, in each of the movie versions, the filmmakers were like, they can't do that. <laughs> and they just, or <laughs> if, they, if they could, they decided not to. And right. in each case, they made sure to set the context of an elite boarding school. Hmm. And it's like, yeah, that's the place where you can get that kind of unhealthy, dysfunctional behavior because they have an institutional structure that does nothing to mitigate those problematic behaviors. In fact, right. the way that those institutions are portrayed in movies, you can go back to some earlier, oh, what's Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Okay. Like that is one of those ones where they make it clear that the institution clearly not only doesn't mitigate against it, it actually implicitly encourages the, the you know, horrible abuses, hazing mm-hmm. and things like that. And it's like, that's where it, when the, the filmmakers in Lord of the Flies decided to set a context, they set the right context because they, they took institutions that are known to be basically abusive or to allow abuse. And so, and so it's really different to then have something in a school where the kids have ownership of it. And because they're, they're going to hear, you know, a jury of their peers, they're going to, they, they, they realize that this is normal everyday activity results in conflict, results in challenges with each other, but it doesn't mean that you then, you know, like, like, when they're when they're coming up with consequences my guess is since i don't know your school Mm -hmm. uh, that because i know others it's like well they're not going to be coming up with absurd punishments because that doesn't fit with their own sense of like how how would i respond to that you know right um how would i feel in that circumstance because they are on doing it on a daily as a daily practice means that they inevitably interact with that on you know if they never get a thing written up against them, they're going to get something, you know, they're going to write things. They're going to, you know, they're yeah. going to have to play on the jury. They're going to, they have to engage with this institution. To yeah. Sit, and to and I think, way. I think one of the, the things that I've seen this year come up is even a school member that you think when they are in there, isn't mm. like maybe engaged you see like how much they're actually learning the process of how to work together because we've had, you know, we have students who, Oh, this is my two weeks. And today I don't feel like being here. So I'm not really like as a, as a staff jury member, as an adult, Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, and as someone who went through a very traditional schooling process, I, I'm telling families and students, I am the term we use is de-schooling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am doing that constantly because there are yeah. little things where 
I'm trained without even knowing to be paying attention to of like, oh, you're not paying attention. You're not doing this. And I have all this real world experience of, I have a lot of experience working with students, students that, you know, are differently abled, students Mm. that are going through, you know, just all sorts of different diagnoses. I've taught students before in a formal setting that had the only way they were going to remember it is if literally they were rolling on the floor while I was talking, Mm -hmm. then they could focus. But Mm -hmm. if I made Mm -hmm. them sit down, they were not going to remember a thing. Right. So I have this experience, but I'll get in there and be like, oh, so-and-so is kind of not into this today. (laughs) And they're just kind of like making their vote when it's time to make their vote and, you know, not asking questions. But then we get to something you know, that is affecting the whole school that needs a whole school vote on. Mm. And they're asking really, you know, intelligent questions and really caring about that outcome and how, you know, and maybe they were seven and they are having questions with the 17 year old that are really engaging Mm -hmm. and showing that they are like, no, I get to ask a question. Firstly, no one gets Mm -hmm. to tell me I don't get to. That's right. That's and right. secondly, what I have to say is important, but I do want to hear what you're going to say back. I want to actually work together on what is the proper solution for our community. Right. You know, right. we can use the word school, we can but really what we're we're building a community. That's what yeah, yeah. this is. And communities have people of different ages and different backgrounds and different interest levels and we have to be able to build something where all of those are respected and can have the dialogue right or else we can't effectively make a community that works for everyone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and it, it really i think speaks volumes that you have you know the the five six seven year olds are part of that because mm-hmm. i was just i'm part of the self-determination theory community and i'm pretty sure it was the the Center for Self-Determination Theory uh, kind of does, you know, social media posts of papers that came out. One of the papers that came out recently was interesting because they were showing that adolescents who engage imaginatively with socially challenging situations have a much greater development of their sort of prefrontal cortex type of function, executive function type stuff. Mm -hmm. And of course, they're studying mainstream schools. You have to assume that all the time and i think you know wow they're doing this thing where they were able to set up these conditions where some kids get this exposure to dealing with this but what happens if they're if they're dealing with it on a daily basis from seven years old or five years old for a decade before they're an adolescent you know it's like that i bet that has a really interesting you know consequence if only people would study it and that's right that's the challenge <laughs> yeah when people are really only exposed through, you know, their experience and the and our, and what they see in media, of this is what a school is. Mm-hmm. The idea of anything outside of that is very well. That's not the gut reaction is. Mm-hmm. No, that doesn't. You can't do that. And mm-hmm. it's like, <laughs> no, we have we have all these years of success. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Burr.